One, two, three. Write a song and no one hears I'll write a song at night It's called if they say they love you You can be sure that's a lie Notes they sound innocent In the heyday of your youth Right before you tripped on wickedness Into the valley of the truth So come a little closer Joe Biden's president Can tell you where you stand People are going to be presented, and these cliches are just going to be perpetuated. This is the first time I've dyed my hair since college. What color did you do in college? Red. <laughs> Can you believe that? And like certain people, I, I like have kind of like shied away from it or from like doing business with me as a result of it. But I feel like it's been definitely a net positive because I don't try to be someone else. I'm not. I'm not fake in my mm -hmm. dealings with people just me. So right now I'm at the hot towel and this is the owner Hello. of the hot towel and also a barber. He's, he's my go-to barber. I, I don't feel good about going to anybody else. I feel like whenever I do, if I'm like in a weird situation where I do have to use somebody else, they just, they just end up making a mess that this guy has to correct. And so this is, this is my main barber. And I really appreciate the support. How did you get into this business? I tell people because of a bad haircut. <laughs> because of a bad haircut? Yeah, I used to be in the military and my first duty station I got there and then I paid like $15 and 10 minutes after the haircut I went to the Walmart, got me some flippers and started cutting my own hair. Been doing that ever since. Don't have a whole lot of hair anymore but that's what really got me into the industry. It's, and I fell in love with it. It's now feel like work to me. And I bet everybody in the doors was coming to you for a cut. Mm, I love I love coming to work every day. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. And I remember I found this place might have been like two or three years ago. I don't even know. I just kind of stumbled in here. And I'm I'm real picky about. Or I guess I really wasn't that picky, but now I've become picky now that I've seen that a barber could be somebody who does like a really good job and just like really takes care of you. What kind of customers do you get here? Mostly, we get a lot of veterans, active military, a lot of people from around the community. It varies, honestly. It does vary. Yeah, I bet you got to do a lot of military cuts. Yeah, that, that's definitely a big percentage of it. Word, word. So it's not too often that you're dyeing people's hair. No, no, <laughs> not really. It's been actually, it's been a while. Uh, we get some perms and stuff like that. Oh, okay, like 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 a pimp's perm. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We get those. That's pretty cool. We actually get a lot of guys for those. Really? Yeah. I would not have suspected that. Yeah. You know what, Marty? I think I think that's the next move. I'm getting a perm. Perm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go by Frost from here on out. <laughs> if you weren't a barber, what would you be doing? I'd probably still be working federal. That's actually what I was doing before this, working federal. Oh, cause you were uh, you were security forces, right? Mm -hmm. You were a cop. Yeah. Yeah. So he so he was a cop, and let me tell you, in the military, that's not a fun job. <laughs> it's <is> not. <laughs> I mean, so a recruiter might tell you, oh yeah, you know, like being a cop is great, and, and it sounds good on paper, but. You get to blow up so many things. Oh man. Maybe once a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like a pretty cool community too. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty tight. Pretty, pretty tight. tight community. Yeah. If you had a billboard, and let's say this billboard was 500 feet long, I mean this was like a massive billboard, but like everyone would see us just in the middle of the springs. What would it say? That's a tough one because I'm not, I'm not one to say much. <laughs> You're not a proselytizer. Uh, no, no, I'm not. You kind of live and let live. Yeah, yeah. What would you say to a college student that was just, you know, he's just coming out of college and he's about to enter the real world for the first time? I guess we really don't, don't be know discouraged too much about that. <laughs> yeah, I think the the biggest thing is not to be discouraged. Not to be discouraged. Yeah. Need college students they. Go out to the real world and start working after they put so much money and time into a degree and And then I guess sometimes especially in the beginning it feels kind of like Like almost maybe like you were lied to a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. how I feel like a lot of times It's like man, like I did everything I was told to do like why you know, 
why am I not where I want to be yet? But I guess it takes time, you know? Mm -hmm. It takes time and patience. No, some people, you know, find the right job for them from the get go, but sadly that's not the reality for everybody. Yeah. All right. So, John, how do you? What's the process of, of dyeing dyeing hair? So right now we're actually lifting the, your natural hair color. We are taking the pigment out. We're opening the hair shaft. Wait, there's a hair shaft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is. What? Yeah. What does that mean? It, it's legit. A shaft has like three <laughs> different parts inside the shaft, even though it's so tiny and thin. That's crazy. Right now you're going, your natural hair level, it's probably like a two or three. A two or three. Mm -hmm. So the lower the number, the darker the hair is. Uh huh. And right now we're probably getting to like a, I'd say probably like a five or a six. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're actually causing a little bit of damage to the hair shaft. Oh, okay. So you don't want to leave the product there too long. Because otherwise you get shafted. Oh, uh, yeah. It's where you're going to be looking like me at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is there anything I have to do for like maintenance wise? Whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. I can't really see it, but like I could kind of see it. So maintenance wise, no, not with bleach. Uh, I'm going to do like a treatment and everything. Oh, okay. To rebuild some of the, the bonds that were breaking. There's not a whole lot you need to do at home. A lot of people go for like the violet tone, like the gray color. Oh, okay. We'll have to just do like a violet shampoo. Maybe that's the next move, I'm going violet. You're gonna be using my purple shampoo now. There we go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Y'all gonna be fighting over it now. Brandon, why are you judging my stuff? Right now, like as it is right now, this looks like Mad Max, like Apocalypse. Like. <laughs> Where I'm like on a car like that, like playing the guitar or some shit. Probably mud all over your head or something. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't this, I was thinking of actually just going bald. Really? Yeah. Man, you know, the other day I was at the shoe store. Yeah. And I uh, got some New Balance shoes. Okay. These. And the reason I went, to get, I wanted these because I saw a bunch of people at the foot clinic wearing them. Really? And I was like, I think there's some sort of medical, <laughs> medical recommendation going on to wear these, so I just was like, yeah, I gotta wear these for now. Were they right? <laughs> yeah. Question, do you want to go pretty blonde or you want to stick to a little bit of brown in there? I go blonde? Alright. You know, you know whose reaction is going to be really funny when he sees this? Teal. My teal. <laughs> He's old school. Yeah, he's like, I always knew you were a fairy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's also a bald dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, see, like, he honestly kind of looks like you in a weird way. Yeah, I know, I think about it, but completely different personality type. I'm gonna try to take that as a compliment. Then. No, it is a compliment. <laughs> Alright, so, John, from your perspective, why should somebody, if they're thinking about going to supercuts or thinking, thinking about going to some big haircut salon or brand, why should they forego that and come to the hot towel instead? I don't want to sound like I'm better or... It's just... We provide more of a personal, personal touch, having a plan long term. And it's the environment. Like, not about blasting loud music, profanity, or anything like that. I want this to be a place where people can just relax, kick back. Right on. I mean, that's why I come here. That's why I keep coming here. That's a huge compliment because I've heard like, yeah, like, I love coming here, get a great haircut, and get to relax, just... A hot towel. If you're in Colorado, definitely swing by. Tight. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Yeah, I love it. That's it's actually it's, cool. Actually. It's actually lifting quicker than what I thought. Uh huh. This ain't the lukewarm towel here. This is, this is the hot <laughs> towel. I feel like a dog when, when the dog gets petted. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get the grapes and feed me. <laughs> I'm a little different. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna take some adjusting. Yeah. This is cool, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like cool. it too. You wanna take a little bit longer, give it about three weeks. About three weeks. Minutes. And then do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do it. Hello, my name is John Rodriguez from the Hot Towel Barbershop and Salon. 
I'm down in Fountain, West Ohio Avenue. You can find us Monday through Saturday. We'll take care of you here. That's about it. Right John, thank you. Thank I you appreciate it. Thank you very much. He doesn't charge a lot, but he does really good work. I got a carrot top. <laughs> Orange man bad. Orange man bad. <laughs> I fucking, I think it's super cool. I'm happy. Like, I really like it.